Good morning, East, and welcome to the first episode of Twice as Interesting. Here we'll explore various topics and concepts in science and technology. So, let's get right into the video. Now, we all probably know what a black hole is, right? It's a massive thing in space that sucks in whatever crosses the event horizon and doesn't even let light escape. And for all we know, we know close to nothing about them, but is that true? Now, the basic fundamental aspect on black holes is that at a certain point in distance from the singularity, no physical matter can escape from the immense gravitational force. Now, let's narrow down all physical matter to a much smaller thing. Breaking down physical objects, compounds, and even atoms, we get to elementary particles such as quarks, and what we're focusing more on at the moment, photons. Photons are the elementary particle most associated with light. Have, they have no mass and have a constant velocity of 3 times 10 to the 8 power meters per second. So if you want to know more about how these black holes work, we need something that can act as the photons, then make a force that's analogous to gravity on the larger scale. So we'll have to use something other than light. The answer, sound. Sound has no mass like photons and in a vacuum has a constant speed which is much slower at 343 meters per second. The idea on this pseudo black hole has been around for much longer than you think actually. William Unra of the University of British Columbia in Vancouver proposed theory back in 1981. He is also known for theorizing the UNRWA effect, but that is merely a fun fact of the professor for this video. But after almost three decades, using a Rubidian Bose-Einstein condensate, which is essentially matter that has been cooled in such a way that is nearly at absolute zero, and then being able to move the condensate particles at near sonic speeds, scientists were able to create the dumb hole in 2009. And in 2014, scientists have detected a very similar version of what would be Hawking radiation, which is the focal point of the theory stating that any given black hole must emit some subatomic particles or electromagnetic radiation that was proposed by the brilliant Stephen Hawking. The experiment, although revolutionary, does have some flaws. Some variables and components of the experiment have no equivalence with the real black holes. So, yes, the dumb hole doesn't have the identical behavior, but it isn't done. Up until now, this idea and experiment gave us an opportunity to see what could be the basic functions of black holes. And this year, scientists may be releasing what could be the very first photo of a black hole. It isn't a normal photo, though. It's made with exposure to different wavelengths of electromagnetic waves, and it's very new, so it probably won't be a very clear and concise image. But now we can see what a real black hole looks like and be able to connect the visuals to what we already know from our sonic black hole experiments. And when we understand the functions and behaviors of black holes, we may discover other things that we may not have expected. The singularity and its location in space, the possible origins of the universe, and the orbits of galaxies. It may even provide evidence for the theory of wormholes, relativity, and other theories and ideas. An understanding that may lead to revolutions in galactic and intergalactic space travel and research, whether it's for orbiting and observing a black hole, or maybe even entering one. It will still require, possibly, decades of more research, but it can be done. But intergalactic space travel is just an idea, right? Well, right now it is. We don't know if it will still be one in the next few decades. We do have the potential to understand the secrets of the universe and conduct expeditions in outer space. Just like William Unruh's sonic black hole idea, it could become a reality. This was twice as interesting, signing off.